All right, this is Uncle Jam back at it with another resource pack video. In this video, we are going to be going over custom biome palettes. What I mean by that is changing the color of grass and leaves based on the biome they are in. Now, as you can see, I have exaggerated the biome palette here by creating some very vibrant colors depending on the biomes, and you'll see they apply to the leaves. Now, there's two methods you can do to do this. There's the vanilla method using the vanilla color map, as well as a method provided to us by Optifine, which has much more capabilities than the vanilla method. So I will go over both of these methods in this video and hopefully provide some clarity so you can create these custom biome palettes for your own pack. So let's get into it. All right, so let's start off with the default method. Now there's a few advantages and disadvantages of the default method. The only real advantage is that it is default and doesn't require Optifine. However, the disadvantages are you can't actually edit the swamp and mesa biome, and also the birch and spruce leaves don't get affected by the vanilla color map. The Optifine method will fix both of these errors. However, we are going to cover the default method for those of you who want to use it. So let's start off with heading into our resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, check out episode 1 in the resource pack series. Let's head into assets, into Minecraft, into textures, and into a folder called color map. Now you'll notice two images inside of this folder. We have grass.png and foliage.png. Now grass, this is the color map that will apply to the grass block. And this is the color map that will apply to the leaf block. Now, what the game will do is, when you place down a grass block, it will detect what biome it is in, and it will look at these color maps and apply a certain color depending on the biome. So let me open up this PNG file here. We'll zoom in and you can see a kind of gradient effect going across this color map. Now, there's a template that I found online by Word Wizard, which helps bring some clarity to this image. So as you can see by his template, we have a bunch of biomes listed on the image represented by a bunch of horizontal and vertical or diagonal lines. Now these lines represent what areas of this image display in which biome. Now, as you'll notice, the x-axis is actually the temperature and the y-axis is a rainfall or humidity value. So what the game does is it detects a value based on temperature and humidity and will plot it on this graph. And that's how it decides which texture, which color to display. It's a bit complex to understand. And that's why, once again, this method, it can be a bit confusing. However, you can still edit with this method. Now, the template that Word Wizard has assembled is actually pixel perfect. So if you take that template and you color in all those lines, depending on the biome, you will actually get those colors showing up in each biome. So if you want to create a vanilla method, I would definitely recommend using that template. So let me just show you a way you could do that. All right, so here I am with the foliage color map pulled up in Pixelmator, which is my image editing software. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the foliage color map is the fact that this upper right-hand corner of the image is not used in the game. Now, I believe it is a bug in the game's code. However, it has not been used for over three years now in the game. So that can be confusing and distracting for some people, but just keep that in mind that this upper right hand corner is not used in the game. So what that means is we can use the template that I just showed you for the foliage PNG as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna overlay the template right on top of my document. So there we go, I just dropped it on and I'm gonna line it up right on top. Now you can do this in your image editing software to help you out. So as you can see in my layers over here, we have the background layer and we have the template. So what I mean by this is pixel perfect is all these pixels correspond directly to the biome in question. So for an example here, 
Let's use the mushroom biome. So let me zoom in to the mushroom biome here. And I will edit this image so we can change the color of the leaves in the mushroom biome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another new layer over here on top of the template. And we're going to grab our pixel tool and we will change the color to say yellow for visual purposes. And I'm going to color in all of these purple pixels here. Now, as you can see, this method is definitely a tedious and it is somewhat confusing in order to grasp how to do it. But this will work and it will change our leaves in the mushroom biome. Now, one thing I want to mention is diagonally going up towards the top is the height value. So as you can see, up here is going to be higher up on the Y axis in the world and all the way down here will be closer to the void layer. However, on this template, there is no way to actually tell which one of these pixels is going to affect which height. It is a very general eye statement. So let me finish coloring these in and I'll get back to you when I'm done. As you can see, I've colored the mushroom biome and the jungle biome. It is not the cleanest color job, but just make sure you cover all those pixels. You could make it really clean if you wanted. However, it doesn't really matter in this case. So now what you wanna do is make sure you remove the template and you can see we have my image here all edited up. So what I'm gonna do now is export this image. And keep in mind, I just did these vibrant colors for demonstration purposes. Make sure it's a PNG. And we wanna keep the name the exact same, so foliage.png, hit export. And there we go. Now let's close out of our document here. And keep in mind, I did this for the leaves texture. So I'm just gonna install it into my pack. We'll replace the old color map and there we go now let's head in game and see if it worked so here i am back in game here's the mushroom biome here so what i'm going to do is reload my pack and you'll notice nothing has changed and that's because we have to place some leaves down as you can see in the mushroom biome the leaves are all yellow and that's because we changed the tint to yellow and i did the jungle biome as blue so let's head over to the jungle biome and you can already see this jungle tree is all blue and we can change it to blue. So that's how you edit those default color maps. You can do the grass and the leaves for those color maps. Now let's get into the OptiFine method. So there's two things you're gonna need for this OptiFine color map method. You're gonna need the color map image file, and you're gonna need a text document to tell the game how to read and how to implement this color map image file. So let's start off with the image. So I'm gonna open up Pixelmator, my image editing software. You can use any software. And we're gonna create a new image. Now the important thing here is the dimensions of your color map must be 256 by 256 pixels in dimension. This is crucial. You need to have this dimensions or it will not work properly in your game. So we're gonna create a new image and we can see ours pulled up here. Now we have a couple options when creating our color map. We can use the default vanilla method, which would be the triangle across the screen, which is a little confusing and defeats the point of using the OptiFine method, but that is there if you want. You can use a fixed method, which will apply a single fixed color on every biome. So if we made this all white, for example, then your leaves would be white in every biome. And you can use the final method, which is grid. Now this method is the method introduced by OptiFine, which makes it really easy to edit and view your textures based on biomes. What it does is it divides your image into coordinates, X and Y coordinates, turns this into a giant grid. So as you can see up here, we have our X and Y coordinates displayed in my software. Now you'll notice as I run my cursor along the side here, we see the X coordinate increasing. And if we go down, the Y coordinate increases. Now let me just explain what each of these coordinates correspond to in this grid format. The X coordinate represents the biome ID of the biome and the Y coordinate represents the height or the Y value in the world. So the Y coordinate of the world. So the biome ID, every biome has a unique ID, which is a numerical value and can be found on the Minecraft wiki. 
So let me pull up the Minecraft wiki page and show you what I'm talking about. So here we are on the Minecraft wiki and you'll see we have a list of all the biomes. I'll link this in the description by the way. And next to it we have a number corresponding to each biome. So for demonstration purposes we're going to use the plains biome. We'll notice the number is 1. So what this means for us is when the x coordinate is 1, that is the plains biome. So let's head back into our document here. And we will find when the x coordinate is 1, which we would expect to be close to the left hand of the image. And there it is, we can see the x coordinate is 1. So this whole row represents the plains biome. So let's see if I can select just this individual row here. So we're going to highlight my select tool here and we will try to get the width to be one pixel. Here we go. And we see we have a selection of one pixel. Now let me zoom in to the bottom half here just so we can get a clearer image. Now you see it's all white except for this first little line over here on this side, which I have selected. And this is when the X coordinate is one. So this now represents our planes biome palette. So in the planes biome, we can edit the palette based on height. So let me just grab my brush tool here and we will change the color to say a green. Now let's make it uh, visible. So I'm going to make it a dark green just so it doesn't look natural. And we will just color in our entire strip I have selected here, which represents the planes biome. Now this isn't exactly the easiest to show clearly, so I hope you're following me. We are coloring in the planes biome because it has a biome ID of one. It corresponds to the X coordinate of one. This is using the grid method. And once again, the Y coordinates represent the height. So let me demonstrate that by grabbing a different color. We'll say red. And we will color when the Y value is say, 50, 58, there we go, we'll make that red. So when the Y coordinate is 58 in the planes biome, it will display a red overlay on the grass block. So let me export my image now and we will show you what I mean in game, hopefully to clear it up. So we're gonna hit export, make sure it's a PNG file and we want to name it anything we want. I'm gonna name it grass we go, hit export, and we see it appear on our desktop. Let me minimize this. Now we need to install this into our resource pack. So let's head into our resource pack folder. We'll head into assets, into Minecraft. Now we need a folder in here called MC Patcher. If you don't have this folder, make sure you create a new one called MC Patcher. I have it from previous videos. We will head inside. Once again, I have these folders from previous videos, but we want a new folder and we're gonna call it color map. No capitals or spaces. Head inside of that. And now because we are creating a custom color map, we need a new folder in here called custom. So make sure you install your custom color maps inside of this folder. We will drop our image in here. Now we need a text document to tell the game how to implement this image. So on Mac, I'm using text edit. On Windows, you can use notepad. We're gonna open up a text document, make sure we make it a plain text. And if you're on a Mac, head into preferences, open and save, change the encoding to Western Windows Latin one. And you'll see a document appear on the side of the screen, which will show you a few options. And the first one is the format. Now there's three options for the format, which are once again, fixed, vanilla, and grid. And in this case, we are using grid. And now we need to specify the blocks, which we want this color map to be applied to. So you can apply this to any block. In this case, we are doing the grass block. So we need to figure out how to tell the game we want the grass block. So let's head back into Minecraft. And we want to make sure we push F3 and H to show the advanced tool tips. Head into our inventory and highlight over the block in question. You'll see a bit of info about this block. You'll notice it has a item ID number of two, which is to the right of the name. And underneath we have, we can see 
the name, which is Minecraft with a colon, and then it says grass. Now that grass is the name of the block. We can use either the name or the item ID. In this case, I'm going to use the name, which is grass. So back into our document and I'm just going to type in grass. Here we go. And now we need to specify our source image. This is the image name and the path to that image of your color map you just created, which we have down here, which is grass. And this is a PNG file. So it's grass.png. Now there's a little trick you can do in here to specify relative to this properties document. If we put a dot and a slash, and then we type in our name, what it's going to do is it's going to search relative to this properties file. So wherever we place this properties file, it's going to look for grass.png. Now this is the quick way to type it because we always want to keep our properties files linked with our color map files in the same folder is what I mean by linked. So we are going to put a dot and slash. So I hope that makes sense and you're not getting confused there, but this just means relative to this properties file. So let's hit save and we will call it whatever we want. I'll call it grass.properties. Make sure it's a dot properties file as always. And we want to change the encoding once again to Western Windows Latin one. If you're on a Mac, if you're on a Windows, you are all good. Make sure this box is unchecked and we will click save. Now let's install this into the same folder as our image file. Now let's head in game and see if it worked. So here we are back in game and I'm going to reload my texture pack. Right away you'll notice all the biomes lost their color. That's because for all the other biomes we didn't have any color map specified. However, when the, when the plains biome we had it specified as a dark green and as you can see that's working wonders. We also specified it to turn red when we got to the Y coordinate of 58, I believe. And so we are at 56, there's 57. So this one, we should expect to see a red grass block. And as you can see, we see a red grass block and above that, it goes back to green. So as you can see, that's how that color map document works. It is super handy and has so many possibilities with that grid method. All right, so here's a quick overview of the Optifine method. If you wanted to create this for another block, here's what you would do. You would need a new properties file and you would select your format. If you wanted the grid format, which is once again, I think the most straightforward format, you just type grid and you make sure you use the grid format as I showed you with the biome IDs on the X and the heights on the Y. Now you, and then next you specify the blocks that you want. In our case, we wanted grass. And if you want to list more than one block, you just put a space and you type the next block you want. And once again, to find the block names, you head in game, you push F3 and H to see the advanced tooltips and highlight over the blocks. Now, as you can see, some of the leaves are actually have the name leaves and some of the leaves have the name of leaves too, such as the newer leaves acacia leaves and dark oak. So keep that in mind if you're doing leaves, but you can see every single block in the game has a little name next to it. And then you want to make sure you put your properties file in the save folder as your image and use this little dot slash technique to say relative to this properties file and specify the name of your color map file. And that is basically how you do it and make sure they are all within custom color map and MC patcher. So in your Minecraft folder, you have MC patcher, then you have a folder called color map and custom, and there's where your custom color maps are. So hopefully that will allow you guys to create custom color maps for the grass and leaves blocks. Now stay tuned. I'll be making a follow-up video on this one, which will cover some more advanced options with this method, as well as how to do it for things such as water and other cool, unique features. So stay tuned and have a good day.